Remove the immovable, break the unbreakable. God, we believe, God, we believe for it. From the impossible, we'll see a miracle. God, we believe, God, we believe for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, brother. Hallelujah. Everybody, let's join in prayer. Lift our hands to heaven right now. We got a little, re- little feedback here. Lift our hands to heaven. Oh, thank you, mighty God. Praise your holy name, God. Lord, we look to you today. Father, strengthen us. Strengthen your people, Father. Cause us to grow in love and in truth, Father. Help us, God. Let your word be preached, God. Give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to understand. God, we bless your name, Father. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Good morning, everybody. Where the Lord is in the house. Hallelujah, right? Yes. Good. Amen. Amen. My, My sermon today is labeled, he despised the shame. He despised the shame. So I'm going to have you all stand for the reading of God's word. Go ahead and everybody stand. Don't worry, we'll be here for about 30 minutes standing. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Inside joke with the youth group. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. All right, can we get those scriptures up? John 4, 13 and 18. Thank you. All right. Jesus answered and said to her, Now, this is the story of the woman by the well, right? This is a Samaritan woman who Jesus met at the well by herself. And this is John chapter 4, just to put it in context. Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. And the woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that it may not thirst nor come to draw. And Jesus said to her, go and call your husband and come here. And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. And Jesus said to her, you have well said, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one whom you now have is not your husband. And that you spoke truly. Let's move on to John 4, 19 and 26. The woman said to him, sir, I perceive that you're a prophet. And our fathers worshipped in this mountain. And you Jews say that in Jerusalem, the place where one ought to worship. And Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming where you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know, where we know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and truth. And the woman said to him, I know the Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. And Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. John 4, 27, 28 here. Almost done, guys. At the, and at this point, his disciples came and they marveled that he talked with a woman. Yet no one said, what do you seek or why are you talking with her? But the woman then left her water pot went her way into the city and said to the men, Come and see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? Hallelujah. You can all be seated. Thank you for that. Hallelujah. Yes. Now, this, who was this woman by the well? We don't get a lot of information in Scripture about who she is, but we know we can pinpoint some things based on Scripture. We don't know her name. We know she's a Samaritan woman, and she is despised by Jews because Samaritans were despised by the Jews, right? She has had five husbands. If you go back in context at this time, it's probably likely that she was not able to bear children and so had to go from next to the next. And the one that was with her was out of wedlock that she was living with. That in those times was extremely reproachful or disgraceful and shameful, okay? The wo- now, women in those times normally drew water in the morning together. 
Here she is by herself in the afternoon, drawing water by herself, likely being a social outcast. You guys following me? Now, during this interaction, Jesus demonstrates his willingness to touch the most shameful wound in her life. Five husbands, which she was not going to disclose. Amen. Amen. But he touched it. He put his finger right on something that was so painful and shameful, it was keeping her isolated. Church, one of the heaviest burdens we can carry is the shame of your past. Amen. Now, I know we get saved and born again, sanctified, but sometimes there's just something that we won't let him touch. And we're going to dig into that. What is shame exactly? Oxford Languages Dictionary defines a painful feeling of humiliation or distress caused by the consciousness of a wrong or foolish behavior. Strong's concordance in the Greek, the word used for shame is disgrace. Okay? What is the origin of this? Where does it come from? Why is it so deep? Why is it so hard to deal with? Why do we avoid it? Right? Genesis 3.8. Could we post that, please? Now, this is Adam and Eve in the garden after they had eaten the fruit and sinned against the Lord. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the cool of the day. Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, where are you? So he says, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and hid myself. And he said, who told you that you are naked? What is God saying? Who told you you're not perfect? Who told you you're not made in my image? Who told you this? You see, guys, the fruit of shame is the things we hide from God. I'll do everything, but we ain't going to go there. I'm going to handle that one. Right? We're going to get into this. Some of us may not realize that we are still carrying an element of our shame. Okay? Here are some subtle symptoms the stain of shame is still on your soul. Number one, you keep bringing up the past. It's like the record scratch. And when you think of it, it still has a hold on you. You keep talking about it. Okay? You keep talking about it. I just saw a patient this week, and she's a wonderful lady, loves Jesus, loves the Lord. But then five minutes, she goes, man, I'm, I was just in my 20s. Man, I just did some things. I was not following the Lord. I just, I just, oh, man, I just did some things. And she said it over and over again. Five minutes. Okay? Out of the mouth, the heart speaks. Right? There's still a wound there. Or... Or it's something you have never spoken to anybody about on the flip side. Because it just might be too grotesque or too horrible for anybody to possibly fathom, according to your perception. Okay? Number two, you have a tendency to blame people. One of the fruits of shame is blame. And you go, wait a minute, where can you see that in Scripture? Well, let's read it. Genesis 3, 12 and 13. The man said, then the man said, Adam, the woman whom you gave me to be with, she gave me the tree and, and I ate it. She did it. Well, wait a minute. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? And the woman said, the serpent, he did it. He deceived me. Right? At that point, they were naked. They had sinned, and they knew they were naked. Now the fruit that is already coming out is blaming. Okay? Blaming means there's some shaming. You got some shaming if you're blaming. The Holy Spirit spoke that to me when I was blaming my wife for something. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> okay? 
I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> right? So he comes. Guys, one of the fruits of that is you blame. Okay? And you don't, oh, I don't really blame people. But when the pressure's on, do you blame? Right? Right? Number three, you struggle with your identity of who you are in Christ. You struggle with who you are in him. Because part of you is still stuck in the past. How can you embrace old things are passed away and all things are new if there's still that little panoram moment of that time in your past that's like that record scratch that still brings that screech? There's part of you that's still stuck there. Okay? Number four. Now you need to hear this. You struggle with intimacy in your marriage. Ugh, pen drop. You struggle with intimacy in your marriage. Guys, many of us before Christ in our youth made some really bad decisions. You made some bad decisions, okay? You made some bad decisions in your behavior and sexuality, okay? But here's the thing. It is robbing you now if you haven't released. If you haven't released. It's robbing identity, intimacy, and peace in your homes. You don't have to stay there. Amen. Isaiah 54 says, Do not fear, for you will not be ashamed, neither be disgraced, for you will not be put to shame, for you will forget the shame of your youth. Yes. It's gone. You don't even have to remember it. Yes. That's a reality for you. Yes. If there's still that thing that you don't want to share with somebody, that you got to have that trusted person you can talk about these things. What does it say? Confess your faults that you may be healed. you got to have that one or two people that you can say things to the detail. Because you won't get free. you got to shine the light in the darkness. you got to shine it. There's no shame. You won't be ashamed. You won't remember the shame of your youth. His word is unbreakable. Let's proclaim that today. You will not remember the shame of your youth. You will forget it. And the reproach of the, of the widowhood will be anymore. God is greater than your past. Amen. God is greater than the most deepest, dirtiest, nastiest thing of your past. He is greater, and he wants to go there. you got to let him. you got to invite him in. Are you hearing me, church? Hallelujah. Hebrews 12, 2. Look, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, right? And sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus despised the shame. He tasted it. He wore it. He was familiar with it. You guys know he was naked when he was carrying the cross. The ultimate shame. He's been there. He knows it. There isn't anything too horrible in your life that he can't go. Are you hearing me? Yes. Amen. Acts 8.33 in his humiliation. In his humiliation. He was humiliated. He knows. He knows. He knows. He wants to go there. He wants to go there. Well, Matt, you got to show me the scripture. How do, how do I really know? He wants to go to that place. Let's go to the next scripture, please. John 13, 6 and 9. Then he came to Simon Peter. And Peter said to him, Lord, are you washing my feet? And Jesus answered and said to him, what I am doing you do not understand now, but you will after this. And Peter said to him, you shall never wash my feet. And Jesus answered him, I do not wash you. You have no part with me. And Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. God wants to go there. He has to wash it. You will never find out who you really are if you don't let him go to that place. Shame robs identity. Shame robs identity. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Now we're going to talk about a movie. Who's, who's seen the movie Lion King? 
<laughs> right? Everybody's seen the movie Lion King, right? Uh, uh, no, no, don't worry. Hang with me here. Hang with me. <laughs> now, let's go. Let's break it down, right? We got Mufasa. Mufasa is the king lion, right? Then we got Simba, the heir, his son, right? But then we have Scar, who's the jealous uncle who wants to take the kingdom, right? Well, then this whole scenario plays out where Scar lets Mufasa die off the cliff. But Scar makes Simba look like he did it. And Simba believed that he had done it, and he ran. And he went into the desert, and he's starving, right? And he's thirsty. And then who picks him up? Akuna Matata. <laughs> Akuna Matata, right? It was the muskrat, and who else? Then the warthog. The warthog, right? And they're a Akuna Matata, right? <laughs> well, then, now we have Simba, who's growing into a lion, who's in the jungle eating bugs, and hanging out with a muskrat and a warthog. Do we have an identity problem here? Lions eat meat. They don't hang out with what they eat. Okay? And so Nala, the girl, you know, the girl lion who's, who's like grew up with him, well, she comes in the picture now, right? She says, hey, things back home are not good. Right? They're not good. You need to come back and take your place. You need to come back and take your place. Right? And he's like, no. Why? It's too painful. There's too much shame. I can't go. I can't go back. Well, now we got to bring in the prophet, which is the monkey. <laughs> okay? Right? We bring in the prophet, the monkey, right? And he goes, hey, Simba, I know where your dad is. And he goes, yeah. He goes, yeah. Then there's this dramatic scene in the jungle night with the moon. And they're running through the jungle, right? And then they stop in front of this lake that's still. And the moon is reflecting off of it, right? And he goes, your dad's right over there. And he goes, all right. And he walks up to it. And he looks in the water. And he just sees a reflection of himself. And he goes, what are you talking about? Come on, man, you crazy monkey. False prophet. <laughs> right? Right? Well, he goes, he goes, look again. And he looks, and he sees a reflection of his father. You guys, you're made in the image of God. You're made in the image of the Almighty God. You are perfect. When you come to Christ, you are redeemed, you are perfect. And why is this so necessary for you to know? Because you got to take your place in the kingdom. Because if you don't, darkness is. Are you hearing me? Right? And you can't take that place if there's that pain and shame of the past. You got to look in the eyes of the Father. You got to behold His face and His glory. And you got to let Him wash that. You got to let Him wash that past. Amen. 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 Now, guys, everybody, let's all stand. Let's all stand. I'm going to close on that. Now, I'm going to have an altar call. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate that. I'm going to have an altar call. Now, if there's something the Holy Spirit is working on you on right now, get free. Don't wait. Don't wait. Come up here and get free. We will pray with you. We don't even need to know what it is. But if you feel bold and compelled enough to tell somebody, if you got to tell somebody, you ain't going to surprise me. You're not going to surprise your brothers and sisters here. You're safe here. You are safe here. That is the purpose of the body of Christ. We strengthen and build up one another. Amen. You are safe. If you need help, if you need prayer with something that is related to this, please come forward. Please come forward. Thanks, Brother Chris. Now, other, I have one other thing. If you are here today... And you do not know Jesus Christ. He's knocking. You're here for a purpose. He, he, God's sovereign. He's drawing you to himself. Lift your hand today if you have not received Jesus Christ. And just receive him into your heart. You just say the prayer. You, believing is of the heart. Believing is of the heart.
confession is of the lips that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. That you forsake all of your sins and you follow him. Amen. Church, let's pray together. Oh, Father, we thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Father. We thank you, Almighty God. We thank you, oh, Father. God, you are a deliverer and healer, Father. Lord, you will go to those places, Father. We thank you, God. We praise you, God. There's nothing too gross for you. There's nothing too despicable for you. There's nothing, God, that you can't handle. Father, you are greater than all. Lord, put that revelation in our hearts. Bring freedom to our souls today. Help us to find ourselves in you, that we could find our place and our function in you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Come and clean.